Today on BRS TV, we're going to start a new series on maintaining calcium, alkalinity, and trace elements in a reef aquarium. In today's episode, we'll focus on the most important elements to maintain and a brief overview of the methods available to replace these elements. So basically every aquarium owner has heard they should maintain calcium and alkalinity at one point or another, but still something many newer or struggling reefers may not be doing. I think part of this is a result of not understanding the basic water chemistry that's happening in the tank. In fact, the moment someone says chemistry, half of us will instinctively tune out because chemistry implies this is going to be complex. But honestly, most of this is pretty simple. Let's start with how a stony coral grows. For the most part, a coral is made up of a hard skeleton covered with a soft living tissue. The skeleton is largely made up of calcium carbonate. Corals grow by pulling additional calcium and carbonate ions from the water column to produce a larger calcium carbonate based skeleton. So more or less, that's basically it. If we want our corals to be healthy and grow, we need to replace the calcium and carbonate they're taking out of the water. At this point, you may have noticed I've been saying carbonate a lot and not alkalinity. For this purpose, the terms are somewhat interchangeable. There are a lot of things that can make up alkalinity in your water, but in most reef aquariums, it will largely be carbonate. So when we're testing for alkalinity, we're really trying to get a general idea of the available carbonate. And as you can imagine, when we're testing for calcium, we're testing for the available calcium ions. So what about magnesium? Magnesium is equally important, but it serves a different purpose and not used to a large degree in biological function. Its purpose is to make it easier to maintain high levels of calcium and carbonate in our tanks. Without magnesium, it would be pretty much impossible. Calcium and carbonate ions have a strong attraction. They can and will find each other in the water column and form tiny calcium carbonate crystals. These newly formed crystals are very attractive to other calcium and carbonate ions, so the crystal grows. This basically forms tiny specks of sand, which permanently removes these elements from the water and reduces the volume of calcium and carbonate ions available for coral growth. Basically, magnesium's role is to prevent this from happening by making it more difficult for the calcium and carbonate ions to find each other. Magnesium does this by incorporating itself into the surface of the free calcium carbonate crystals in the water column and makes it much less attractive to new calcium and carbonate ions. There are four basic ways to maintain these elements in a reef tank. Water changes, Kelkwasser, two-part additives, and a calcium reactor. Water changes are probably only appropriate for tanks with a fairly low demand, like a tank with mostly soft corals or just a few LPS corals. I say that because water changes are the most expensive way to maintain calcium and alkalinity and requires the most labor as well. Kelkwasser is a pretty popular option for LPS dominant tanks or even some mixed tanks. The most common way to use it is to mix the Kelkwasser with fresh water and allow it to settle out. The resulting mixture will be somewhat opaque with the powder settled at the bottom. This is typically referred to as a saturated Kelkwasser or lime water solution. It's the opaque fluid we want to dose to the tank. It's a fairly high pH solution, so we need to add it very slowly, typically over at least a few hours. This is often done with a dripper, slow dosing pump, or some auto top off solutions. One of Kelkwasser's advantages is its ability to help maintain a higher pH, which most people find desirable. Another popular method of maintaining calcium and alkalinity are two-part additives. Concept here is pretty simple. One jug has calcium and the other alkalinity. You add a small amount each day to replace what the corals consumed. This is typically done at convenient times such as when you feed the fish or automated with a couple of dosing pumps. These pumps will slowly add the dose every day for you, so all you need to do is fill the jugs with fresh solution every month or so. One of the nice aspects of the two-part is simplicity and accuracy. It doesn't take long to figure out how much to add every day, and it's easy to adjust to accommodate additional corals or growth. All you need to do is increase your daily dose a bit and do a few tests. There are a ton of different brands of two-part additives out there, as well as our popular bulk pack version. Last but not least, we have calcium reactors. Calcium reactors can be used on almost any type of tank, but most commonly found on medium to heavy demand tanks, such as an SPS dominant tank. The concept they work on is fairly simple. You fill the main chamber of the reactor with calcium carbonate media, slowly dissolve the media and drip it back into the tank. The media is often small bits of coral skeleton, so it makes a lot of sense to dissolve this into its basic elements for corals to use again. 
To dissolve the media, reactors require a tank of carbon dioxide, which is slowly bubbled into the reaction chamber, which lowers the pH and allows the surface of the media to start breaking down. To get the right amount of calcium alkalinity added to the tank, you'll need to experiment a bit with the amount of CO2 and the drip rate of the effluent into the tank. The effluent will have a lower pH, so it's likely to reduce the overall pH of the tank. For this reason, most tanks that utilize a calcium reactor will operate on the lower end of pH ranges found in reef aquariums and commonly closer to 7.8. One of the perceived benefits of calcium reactors when used with natural coral media is the addition of some trace elements that a coral builds into its skeletal structure. That said, it's unlikely to be a complete source of trace elements because each media is unique, different species of corals utilize different elements, and the skeletal media is unlikely to add elements utilized by the coral soft tissue. That about sums up the basics of calcium and alkalinity in the reef aquarium. To review what we went over today, most coral skeletal structures are made up of calcium carbonate. Corals produce this calcium carbonate structure by pulling calcium and carbonate ions from the water. Testing the tank's alkalinity gives us a good idea of how much carbon is available. Magnesium is equally as important because it allows us to maintain high levels of calcium and alkalinity. Without magnesium, these elements would find each other and permanently precipitate out of solution. In future episodes of this series, we'll go over trace elements as well as devote entire episodes to a more detailed explanation of how to use Kelkwasser, two-part, and calcium reactors. That wraps up today's episode. If you'd like to be notified when new episodes come out, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit BulkReefSupply.com and sign up for our newsletter. Thank you for watching BRS TV.